Welcome back, and thank you for tuning in today. I'm your host, Nathan Patnam, and today we're going to be talking about queues and how to implement them in Python. So what is a queue? A queue is basically a data structure where the first thing you add to it is the first thing that'll come out. And the reason why I have a picture of Cracker Barrel is it's a little bit of a story. So for those of you who don't know, Cracker Barrel is kind of like a sit-down um, restaurant in the South where you can get pretty good Southern food at a, at a decent price. And so my family loves to go there. Uh, but the problem is we always go there whenever it's really busy, either during holiday season or around noontime. Um, and so whenever we get there, we always have to put our name down uh, since there's no tables available. And the system that they use there in order to make it so that the first people who come to put their names down uh, get served first is basically a queue. And so the idea is that uh, if I go there to this table and I put my name down, uh, the people who came before me to put their names down will be served before I will. So just to reemphasize this idea of the first thing in or the first people to come to reserve a table are the first people out or the first people to actually get the table. So what exactly can a queue do? So here's the methods um, that we're gonna be implementing today in Python. So we're gonna see uh, one method is empty, which will return a Boolean value, true or false, depending on if there's something in the queue or not. Um, NQ, which is gonna be the way that we add items to our queue. Uh, DQ, which is the way that we're gonna be removing items from the queue. Peak will show uh, the item that's gonna be, that's in the very front of the queue. Uh, but it's not going to remove it. It's just going to show it. And then size of will return the size of the queue. Um, just like in a stack that I covered in our last video, the time complexity of all these operations are going to be one. Um, especially, we're going to be implementing this using nodes rather than a list like we did with the stack, which is how we're able to achieve this time um, order one time complexity. Uh, so let's talk about the process of a queue. And let's uh, let me just help you visualize what it is. So here's some Python code on the right, define main. And uh, we're here we're instantiating um, our queue data structure with the queue class. And so basically and what's happening is that in some place in memory, uh, there's a block of memory that we are pre-allocating for our queue. And just like in our stack, I'm not gonna be um, worrying about uh, allocating a certain size, but if you need me to or want me to, uh, to write the code for it, just comment below. And so basically after this line of code is ran, um, you're going to have this place of memory that has nothing in it, but that's where we're going to be having, or that's where, where we're adding try queue is going to be stored at. And so uh, what exactly is the value of these two methods? So right here, the is empty method return true since there's nothing in the queue, and the size of would return zero since, as I said before, there's nothing in the queue. So now we're going to use our operation to add items to our queue, which is end queue. And so now we, you can see that there's uh, one thing in our queue three, and so in this case, if we were to run, run these um, two methods again, uh, we would get true. Oh, in this case, we would get false since the queue has the actual stuff in it now. And the size of our queue is one. So now let's add another item to it, five. And the reason why you see two uh, boxes right here and they're not connected together is that we're going to be implementing it using nodes. And so what a node is is basically a data structure. Um, and all the data structure knows is its value. So for example, this node right here, its value would be three, and it knows the node that comes after it. So in our case, five. So that's why you see the error here, it's pointing to five. So it knows that the next node would be five. Uh, the next node in this case, five would be null because it doesn't have anything coming after it. So in our Python implementation, we'll be sending the next value uh, to null. And so another thing I'd like to add about the queue is that there's two sides of the queue. There's the front of the queue, which is on the left-hand side, we'll say, and the right of the queue, which is on the, or the rear of the queue, which is on the right-hand side. And so when we add stuff to it, it gets pushed to the front. Um, and as we keep adding stuff to it more and more, um, the new items are added to the back. And so what is the value of our queue peak? Um, if we were to use it, we would get three in this case because this is the thing at the very front of the queue or the left hand side. Um, so yeah, so let's see what happens if we add eight again. So the same idea of we take uh, this new item that we're adding it and we add it to the rear of our queue to the very, to the end of it. And five, which used to be the tail of our queue, we'll say, is uh, now pointing to eight, which is a new tail of it. So there'll be two terms all we're gonna be using, head and tail. Head refers to the first item in our queue, and tail refers to the last item in our queue. Uh, in a queue where there's only one item, then the first item and the only item in our queue will be our tail and our head. And so in this case, uh, like we had before, um, the, our queue, that is empty method return 
false because there's stuff in our queue. Oops. And the size of our queue now will be three since we added one more thing to it. So now let's talk about the operation of how to get things from our queue, which is DQ. So before, this is what it was before we had the DQ, and this is what happens after we DQ'd. The three was removed from our list. Um, and so if we asked what is the value of this DQ method, we would get back three, since that was the thing that used to be in the head. So now five is the new head of the queue because we now DQ. I'm just gonna slide over to my code editor. And so here we can code our queue class using nodes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you guys my unit test about how I'm gonna test this thing to show you um, once we finish our queue class, how we can test it to make sure that everything's working just fine. Um, like I said before, if there's a topic like unit tests or a time complex view or something I talked about in this video that you don't really understand or you need me to clarify more on, uh, just let me know in the comments and then I can create another video on it. So now these are the unit tests that we have for our node class and these are the unit tests that we have for our queue class. It's a common practice to separate the unit tests for different classes. Um, I would also, if I wanted to write even better code would be to create a file for my node te uh, unit test and a file for my queue unit test. Um, but in this case, I'm just putting all together since they're both pretty short and just for simplicity in terms of testing it. So uh, this is our node unit test. So basically, the unit test is going to cover us creating nodes, uh, making sure that when we create one, we're able to get the value. Uh, when we create uh, a node, we're also able to set the value, and we're also able to set what its next node is going to be. And I can talk a little bit more about that when we go to the node class. So I've already implemented the node class and the unit test. If I run this file, um, I know it says there's three failures and two errors here, but the that's five unit tests together that's failing um, out of the eight unit tests. The three that are passing are these three right here from the node. So if I just go over to the node class, here's my node class implementation of it. Like I said before, um, a node is just basically uh, an item that knows its value and also knows the item that comes after it. It points to the value next to it. And so in our implementation, here's the constructor and all we're specifying it was what this value is going to be um, and what it's going to be pointing to. So when you first created a node, um, like in this case five, it's not pointing to anything. That's why we're going to be setting it to none because it has nothing to point to. And these four methods right here um, it might sound look like a lot of code, but they're basically two methods for each of these values uh, to be able to change the values um, with our getter and setter methods that we can use. And so now let's go over to our queue class so that we can start implementing our queue. So when we first create a queue, um, there's a couple of class variables we should initialize. Uh, like I said before, we're going to be having a, a head that'll keep track of the first item in the queue, and we'll set that to none. Since when we first create a queue, there's nothing in it, we're going to have a tail, and we're going to set that to none. And then we're going to have um, a variable to keep track of size, and we'll set that to zero. So now let's do the end queue one, just because I like uh, just adding items. It doesn't really matter the order in which we code it in. So the first thing we're going to do is create a variable that's going to store uh, the node when we, when we call it to create an item. So what I'm saying here is that when we say in queue, uh, we have to, we're adding the item three. And so we're not adding the number three, we're adding the node three to our queue. So we have to create the node of the item. Uh, and so we can do that with just saying temp equals node. Um, and that's to call our node constructor right here. Um, and then we'll pass in the item that we want the node value to be. And so when we're adding, um, when we're adding something to a queue, uh, we got to keep track of two conditions, um, or there's two separate conditions we have to write code for. One is when we're adding um, an item to an, a queue that has nothing in it. And then one is when we're adding an item to a queue that has stuff in it. So when we're adding um, an item to a queue that has nothing in it, uh, remember that the head and tail are set to none. Uh, and so we basically have to set the head and tail both to be the single item we're adding to it. Uh, and so we can do that by just saying if self dot is empty. So we're going to check to see if the queue is empty or not. Um, then we can just say that the head of the queue is now going to be equal to the temp. And then the tail of the queue will be equal to as well. And so um, right now we're just going to be writing uh, code here. We're not going to be caring about um, if it's clean or not, and then at the very end, I can clean up the code, uh, make it more readable, kind of, um, just shrink it down in terms of size-wise. And then here, we're also going to be increasing the size as well. So now we have to go about the other condition is when we already have stuff in the queue. Uh, otherwise, whenever we're adding something to the queue, we're adding it towards the rear. So basically, what we're doing is 
to get from this step to this step is we're we'll going to go look at the head. And we're going to set the head's next value to be the new node. And that's where we're going to add it there. And so, or excuse me, we're going to look at the tail. So we're going to look at the current tail of the queue, which in this case would be three. And then we're going to set the tail's next node to be the new node that we're adding in, so in our case, five. And then we'll make five the new tail of the queue. And so we can say uh, self dot tail. So we'll take the current self or the current tail of the queue. And then we're going to set the next node to be temp. And then we'll also say that the tail itself will be will be equal to temp. And then we'll increase the size by uh, one. And so uh, just to do a little bit of a code cleanup, even though I was going to do it at the very end, I can just do that here. Um, because regardless of if we're adding it when there's nothing in it or when there's stuff in it, we're going to be incrementing the size. Um, so now let's see if any of our unit tests are passing. So now we have five errors. Um, and let me look at the unit test that covers adding items to it. So the reason why it's failing here is because the peak method that we're uh, defining is, hasn't been defined yet. So for our peak method, we can do it pretty easily. All it's doing is it's returning um, the first item in our queue. So we can just do return self.head.getData because we want to just get the data value. We don't want to ret return the node to the user. Uh, we just want to return the number that or whatever is being represented by the node. And so um, with peak and uh, DQ kind of like in a stack, the contingency that we have is that there has to be at least one item in it. You can't really uh, look inside a queue that has nothing in it or try to remove something um, from a queue that has nothing in it. And so that's something that you have to keep in mind. I'm not really coding for it since I'm the user um, and it's my implementation. But if you are, this might be something that you should be aware of uh, for possibility sake. So now let me see if any of my unit tests are passing. So I'm still getting an error. So if I go up to testing queue, it says name true is not defined. And so basically the reason why it's not being defined here is because I haven't finished my um, is empty in my size of class. So I'll just finish those real quick so that we can start testing it. So we'll return um, if the self dot size equals zero. Um, and I'll return if it's empty or not. And then to return the size of all you have to use return self dot size. Oops. And so basically all my unit tests are working except one of them. And I believe that's the one for DQ um, since I haven't really wrote the code for DQ. So uh, basically we'll say uh, we're going to first do a check. We're first going to check the size of the queue and see if it's empty or not. Uh, or we're first going to do a check to see if there's only one item in the queue. Um, and so say, for example, I had one item in my queue and I wanted to DQ from it or I'd take this three out. I would have to set both the head and tail to null or none in our case. And then um, say I wanted to DQ remove this three here when I ask, when there's two items in the queue, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to update the head because three or the thing that I'm t um, t removing from the queue will be at the head of the queue. So I'll set the head to be the thing that it's currently pointing to or its next node. And that should be it from there. So first I'll check to see if uh, the self dot size is one. And if so, I can set this, both the head and the tail to be null. And then I'll also uh, subtract one from it. Whoops. And then at the very end, regardless if there's one item or, or more, um, I'll be subtracting one, one from the size. So I can just do it here. Otherwise, and whoops, um, another thing I should keep, uh, I should also keep in mind is that we should have a variable to store the data that's currently at the head. And so we'll say that um, it's equal to the head and we'll get the data with its method. And uh, the reason for this is that when we're dequeuing or we're taking something from it, we're always removing from the head. And so this is the easy way just to get the data from the very beginning. And then at the very end, we'll return temp data. So now we have the logic to work if there's only one item in the queue. So what happens if there's more than one item in the queue, then we'll say that the current um, head is going to be equal to whatever's next to it. Um, 
And I think that should pass. Let me just pat all my unit tests are passing. So now let's uh, clean up the code a little bit. Um, one thing that we can do is you see where it says self.head equals none, self.head and all that. We can create a little bit of a, a helper function. So the way we create uh, helper functions um, that we don't want people to implement is by using a double underscore. Um, that's our a naming convention, convention in Python um, to tell people who use our code that, hey, this is a function that's private trick code. Uh, please don't use it. It's being used inside the class itself, and it should only be used inside the class itself. And we'll call this uh, set um, tail and head. And we'll pass in some parameters. Um, and we'll say this will be what the tail is set to. And we say this is what the head will be set to. Uh, and so now we can do something like uh, self dot under, underscore, underscore set tail and head. And we can say that we want to set both of those to none. And I'll take this little piece of code and I'll copy it right here also, because that's what we're trying to do. Make sure all the lining is working as well. And we'll write the same piece of code right here and replace it. Um, but instead of none, we want to set it to temp. And then set the tail to temp. Since we're not setting the head, there's really no point in calling my function. And then let me just make sure all my unit tests are working. And I have invalid syntax. And I forgot to make sure that since I'm writing this as a method in Python, I have to include the word self. Uh, and it says self. Oh, I forgot to actually write the code here. So I'll say self dot uh, head equals whatever's in the head, and self dot tail equals uh, whatever's in the tail the variable. And then all my units has passed. And uh, yeah, that's how you implement a queue in Python. If you like this video, uh, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you didn't like the video, then uh, instead of disliking this video, just tell me in the comments why you don't like it and uh, what I could do better next time. Uh, if you want to see more, yep, just like and subscribe and uh, check out my previous video on stacks and employment them in Python. Thanks again for watching. Next time I might be uh, implementing a deck, uh, a double-sided queue. And uh, yeah, thanks.